morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him a hand of praise. He is worthy. He is worthy of all things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful for God's strength and his power. Amen. He is so faithful to us. Amen. We could never thank and praise him enough for his faithfulness unto our God. Hallelujah. He is so good. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, amen, starting at verse 29. Hallelujah. And it says, John chapter 1, starting at verse 34, or 29, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it again. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Let's pray. <laughs> Lord, we are just so thankful that we can be found in your house today, giving you glory, giving you praise for all your mighty, good, and wonderful things, God, deeds that you have given to us. Lord, we cannot thank you and praise you enough, Lord. And once again, we are found in your house, Lord, to glorify you, to praise you, and now to hear the word of the Lord. Lord, I pray, God, let your glory, Jesus, let your power, God, be demonstrated in our lives, Lord giving us the victory, giving us the power, and God, giving us a revelation, Lord, of Your Word, and Lord, of what You are, Lord. You are the Lamb of God, Lord. Let us behold You in all of Your glory and all of Your power today. Lord, I pray You would hide me behind the cross. Lord, nothing that I say, nothing that I do, I cannot do without you. Lord, send your Holy Spirit down in our lives, I pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. I was reading this scripture, and there John the Baptist is declaring as he sees Jesus coming his way and he wants to uh, recognize him and he wants to declare see it's one thing when you see someone there's a lot of people going through this life and they don't know who Jesus is uh, they have never had an encounter with Jesus uh, they've never experienced his love but there's one thing John the Baptist uh, when he saw Jesus he knew that he was the Messiah. He knew that he was the Lamb of God that was going to come to deliver his people and not only his people but everybody that is on the face of the earth uh, that they could be free and cleansed from their sins. Oh hallelujah. I'm so thankful this morning that I know this man named Jesus. Uh, I can say just like John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God. Can I get a witness this morning if you've ever encountered the Lamb of God? Hallelujah. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. But there's one word I want you to focus on this morning is when John declared to the people and those that were around that day he said behold I want us all to say it together behold if there's anything that we need to behold I looked up the meaning and it says to see or to observe and especially a remarkable or impressive one I want you to know that's who my Jesus is. Yeah. He is remarkable. He is an impressive one. He will change your life. He will turn your life inside out and, and he will turn you to where you will have that joy and you will have that power and you will have the victory hallelujah in your life today. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God and His great love. I want you to know we need to behold the Lamb of God. 
God. We need to put our focus on Jesus Christ. There's a lot of things that can take up our mind. There's a lot of things that these eyes have seen. But there's one thing I want to see. I want to see my Jesus for who He is. I want to see Him in all of His glory and all of His power. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what Jesus prayed when he prayed in John 17, 24. He said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. See, he wants you to be with him. He wants you to walk alongside him. When you say, well, I've never seen Jesus. Well, I can say the same thing. No, not with my physical eyes, uh, but with my heart and with my soul. I have experienced more of Jesus' love and more of his power than I could ever see with my physical eyes this morning. Hallelujah. For they may behold my glory. Listen to that. We need to behold the glory of the Lord. I want you to know that God in His love and His mercy sent Jesus Christ, hallelujah, so that you could behold all the glory and all the power. And I want you to know you don't have to wait till you get to heaven. You can receive that glory and you can receive that power in your life this morning. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Are you out there? Amen. Amen. Which was given me. See, Jesus, He received that glory in His life. And see, He wants to give it to each and every one of us this morning. He wants to pour out His glory and His passion and His love to us. And it says, even from the very foundation of the world. God in His great love put this thing in motion and I want you to know even before anything was created God had a plan. Hallelujah. And His name is Jesus. And we need to behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. That's what I was sharing with uh, those, you know, you know, the, one of the songs that we sing in, in the Christmas program, you know, I've been listening to, to the songs and there's just a, a really good song in there talks about if you take it all away, if you take away the manger, if you take away the shepherds, you take it all away, you take away Jesus. I want you to know uh, we have a Christmas, we have joy, uh, we have peace and I want you to know it's not because of Rudolph the Red nosed reindeer. It's not because of Santa Claus. It's because of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Poor old Rudolph. You know, I can remember now as a kid. You know, we didn't have, I know you probably could probably get it, pull it up right on your phone and watch it if you want. The kids could watch it any time you wanted to. But when we were kids, we only could see it when it aired on television. I remember one time we were coming here for Christmas program, and that was the night that Rudolph was going to be showing. And we were like, hurry up, you got to get home. We want to see Rudolph. I told someone the other day because they shared a uh, there was something on there. They're they're getting on Rudolph. It, it, it's a terrible thing for kids to watch. It's going to give them psychological problems. Uh, the people and the characters, Hermie, he was a psychopath. They're telling them. They're telling all these things. I want you to know we live in a messed up world. Amen. We live in a world where it's terrible to watch 
just Rudolph, but I looked the other day and saw this new show that's on Netflix, and I'm going to warn your pa warn the parents this morning, you need to keep an eye on what your kids are watching. You need to make sure that they're not looking at filth. There's cartoons that are coming out, uh, and they're teaching homosexuality. They're teaching masturbation. They're teaching uh, pedophile, and I want you to know it's straight from the pits of hell. We better get our eyes open to the truth. We better quit looking at everything else and beholding all the things and, and the dazzle and the dreams of this world. And we better get our eyes beholding the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We better get our eyes on Jesus. Isaiah 53 says, even from the... In the Old Testament, you know, Jesus was prophesied. And it says in Isaiah 53, He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So He opened not His mouth. I want you to know that's where the lamb comes from. Because see, a lamb doesn't open up its mouth. Uh, Jesus went to the, to the soldiers. Uh, he went to the blasphemers. He went to those that mocked Him and bruised Him and whipped him and nailed him to the cross but he opened not his mouth but he went and he bled and he died for you and me so that we can lift up our hands and we can open our mouths and we can praise his holy name for all that he has done yes. hallelujah I want you to know we go to Great measures to behold the things that we like. Amen? There's things that we like to do. There's things that we enjoy to do. I, I saw, you know, they opened up the new Chick-fil-A over there in, in LaVale. And I don't know how many saw, you know, they were giving out, I guess, free meals. I don't know if that means every day or what it is, but I heard... Free meals for a year. They put up their tents in the cold weather just so that they could be the first in line. The first 100 would get the prize. I want you to know, I want you to know God has better things to offer you than a Chick-fil-A meal. Yeah. He wants yeah. to give you His glory. He yeah. wants to give you His salvation. Yeah. He wants to cleanse you yeah. from all your sins. And He wants to set you free. Hallelujah. Because we're living in an evil time. I am an, I'm just an amazed how quickly it's coming all to pass. How quickly things are changing. I want you to know we need to rub the, the sleepers out of our eyes. We need to unclog our ears. Uh, and we need to take a check look at our heart. And we need to say, God, is there anything in my life? Am I beholding too much of the world? And not beholding your glory and your power and thinking on what you have done for me. Because I want you to know if you are not staying tuned with Jesus Christ, uh, you're not even going to know when He appears. I think of the story of the men that were on the road to Emmaus. Here comes along Jesus on that road. This was after His crucifixion and he had risen from the dead but he had not ascended into heaven yet and they were walking along the road and here comes Jesus and they said that they didn't even know who he was there he was talking and they said are you a stranger don't you know what happened they were downtrodden they were sad they were depressed but here come along Jesus to lift and it says when he sat down with them and gave bread, their eyes were open to see who he was. Hallelujah. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, Jesus was gone. And they looked at each other. And they said, oh, 
how our hearts burned within us when he was here and when he talked with us. See, that's what God in His great love and divine wants to do in our lives. He doesn't want us to be holding the filth of this world, the evilness of this world. He doesn't want us to get too comfortable down here. And I know a lot of times at this Christmas season, we can leave, we can miss the true focus of what Christmas is all about. I say, Lord, give me a check in my mind and in my heart that I will behold what you are all about because it's about Jesus and his great love divine. Hallelujah. It says in Galatians 1.4 who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. I want you to focus on that first part. He gave Himself. That you can get all the presents. You can load down the tree this year. You can go out shopping till your feet are so sore and you can't move. Uh, but I want you to know the greatest gift of all is Jesus Christ. He gave Himself. He didn't give a cheap old thing that was left on the side. No. He gave His very self to you and me so that we could be set free. Oh, how you Hallelujah. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for Him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. See, He's looking for that church. He's looking for those that are beholding the Lamb of God, beholding the glory and the power. And I say, not just to the young, not just to the old, not to just the in-between, but each and every one of us are going to stand on that day. And we are either going to go up to meet Him in the clouds with Him, or we're going to be left here to face a terrible situation. That's going to hit this, this land. I was moved a little bit. You know, I know they say how the president doesn't get much attention. And especially our, our um, the president's wife, Melania. But, you know, there have been some, like Fox News, have shared some of the decorations outside the White House. How many have seen some of the, the decorations, maybe on television or something? But I was moved and I didn't know. She took one of the hallways all the way down the White House. And there are these beautiful red trees. How many have seen those red trees? Beautiful, blood red. I'm not talking, I mean, these things are deep blood red and it said that the media and the world laughed and, and made fun of her red trees and said they were ugly and they're disgusting but I, I thought about it for a little while and saw the little commentary on what the symbol of a red tree is. It goes way back to the early church. They would dye the trees red to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To remember, I want you to know because of, of the season, uh, because of the joy, because of the peace of all the things that we could have, it's because that He came uh, so that we could have life. Uh, His blood ran freely for us so that we could be saved this morning. And if there's anything we need, we need any kind of illustration or anything that we can grasp. This world needs to see that there was a lamb that went to a cross and he bled and he died for their sins. And if it's in a red tree, let it be so that we will remember that this thing is about Jesus Christ uh, and it is Him who will set us free this morning. Hallelujah. Let us observe. Let us think on Him. You know, I think of all those things and I said it last Sunday. I'm just, I'm just so moved because I know, yes, 
you know, it's all fun. I, I'm not going to go, hey, Santa Claus, that's terrible. But I, I just, I am moved on how there isn't much of where it's about the Lord. Where it's about Jesus. We as the church need to remember and we need to tell it to those that we come in contact with. We need to share the love of Jesus. We need to let them know, hallelujah, that the reason that we have a Christmas, I want you to know I've done it before. I've asked the children and I bet you if you got a majority of them around, they wouldn't even know the true meaning of Christmas. We need to tell our little children. We need to teach them Sunday school lessons. We need to teach them the Word of God when they're at home. When they go to bed at night, let them know that this man named Jesus, let us behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Revelation, Chapter 3 said, Behold, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut. He said, Behold, I come quickly and hold that fast which thou hast received. Don't let go. See how every time he's saying behold, we need to behold the glory of God. We need to behold this man named Jesus. We need to see him in all his glory and power. And we need to know that it is he. Hallelujah. As he declared in Revelations 1, I am he that liveth. I was dead and behold, I am alive alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And I have the keys of hell and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has paid the price for us so that we can have life. So that we can be free. Without Jesus this morning, we have nothing. We need to behold the Lamb of God. We need to be like John the Baptist. Let's get our minds, let's get our eyes off of the things of this world, uh, off the frivolous things, the worries and everything and the cares, uh, and let's put our mind on Jesus Christ, uh, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Can you say amen this morning? Amen.